Is sales really a numbers game? You probably have heard this reference before. Uh, whether you have seen sales training, you may have seen people who have claimed that sales is just a numbers game. You just simply go out there and do what you're told and do enough of it and you'll eventually sell stuff. While there's other people who think the idea of sales being a numbers game is insane, how it discounts a lot of the other aspects of what you do, such as the interaction you have with your clients, being able to ask good questions. So what I'm going to tend to do here is better clarify what the concept of sales being a number game really means and, and explore why I personally think this is the case. And I'll make my case here as to why that's the case. So my name is Dave Duford. I'm the owner and operator of Final Expense Agent Mentor. I sell insurance. I recruit agents to sell insurance. And we, of course, deal with sales. So we understand that in the business of selling something that you've got to find a way to make a system work to your advantage. And that's why I'm doing this video because I believe that sales predominantly is a numbers game after a certain point. And what I'm going to intend to do here is go through several different circumstances to explain why I think, first of all, that sales truly is a numbers-based game and why you should embrace this and um, embrace the concept of the law of large numbers to, to uh, work in your favor to maximize your income and give you the best chance of whatever it is that you're selling out there to be successful long-term in the career of sales. So first of all, why do I think sales is a number of games? First of all, sales is, at the end of the day, not everybody's a prospect. So you'll hear sales gurus who claim, hey, look, if this guy's you know, got a pulse, if they can fog a mirror, this is a prospect. You can sell them something. You need to get in front of them. You need to sell them stuff. You should. Well, the problem with that is that the reality is, is people are in different walks of life at any time. Now, the truth is there are some people who are going to be in a position to want what you're selling them. The challenge is finding them, right? And the only way we can find them is seeing enough people. Uh, whether Which way you prospect, whether you have inbound leads, you purchase leads, you cold call, it doesn't really matter. It's the same, same set of skills. It's the same metrics. Some may be better than others, but ultimately, at the end of the day, you have to work through a variety of different people getting rejected on the phone for appointments, getting rejected in the home for sales, and then eventually finding a few people that are actually in the right mindset to buy what you need. The problem is, is that in, in sales, this is an unavoidable phenomenon. In rare occasions will you find people that can completely avoid the necessity of doing and shuffling through the prospects that are what we call unqualified prospects. It takes most salespeople, probably 90% or greater, time working through different prospects, seeing where they are in a buying cycle, and determining if they're a qualified prospect or not. And the only way that you can find one who is qualified is spending enough time with them, maybe over time eventually calling on them again, and then now they're in the market, or just doing enough, pro doing enough prospecting to ultimately find somebody who does fit the bill and now is presently ready for whatever it is that you're doing. And that is a numbers equation. Uh, it's very unlikely that all you'll have to do is a minority of presentations to hit your goals because of the nature in which people are in different modes of the buying process. And again, usually the people who are in a buying process are a small minority. You know, maybe 90% or greater are not in the buy immediate buying cycle. So it takes a lot of work to find those that are. And But what about your presentation skills? So, you know, look, you're going to be in a position where you're selling, where you've got to talk to different people in the different buying cycles. But what about presentation? How much does it actually matter of your ability to present to a prospect? Well, it does matter. And, and I think what a lot of people conclude is that when someone suggests that sales is a numbers game, that it means that it's not a presentation game. And it's totally wrong. It's just that there's different levels of importance in, in figuring out which is more important at what point in your, in your progress as a salesperson. I think, first of all, it's important when you start selling to really grasp what it is that you're selling, learn about your product, learn why people want to buy it, and learn what questions to ask when you're in front of potential prospects and figuring out if they're a right fit. A lot of this can be learned through corporate training, uh, typical training measures, and it can be especially learned by watching a skilled pro in the field for a couple of ride-alongs, see how they interact with clients and how clients interact with them, and then replicating that process. Once you have a basic method, a basic presentation, again, it doesn't so much matter what the presentation is. It's, I mean, I have a preference for low-key question-based orientations uh, presentations. I think that results in better results as far as client outcomes. But it doesn't really matter all that much, which is if it's more a little uh, assumptive in nature or not. 
you pick a presentation you like and your next step is to go out there and see a number of people that you can consistently do in high volume and to figure out what your ratios are. The problem is a lot of people think the secret to sales is learning some whiz bang, you know, secret sauce sales presentation. And then when they go out there and implement it, they're still pissed off because they're not making sales. But when you start looking at their numbers, they're only writing, you know, a couple of cases a week if they're doing small numbers, of course, but they're doing a small amount of presentations and they're, they're mad because they're not making what they thought they would when reality is they're not really working that hard. I tend to think that while presentation skills matter, you got to get that locked in, do a basic level presentation, and then the next step is to scale that out as much as humanly possible. Uh, it depends on the business, of course, that you're in and the kind of product you're selling. But generally speaking, even if you have a shorter a sales cycle that isn't you know super long and you've got a lot of prospects to call on, your goal should be at least to do 15 presentations a week. In the life insurance business that I operate in, that is the magic number. A lot of different sales gurus and life insurance sales, they all say that 15 appointments a week is the magic number. you got to fight to see 15 people a week, and it is not hard to do if you just set your mind to make it happen, no matter what kind of prospecting method you do. So as a manager or somebody that recruits agents uh, to sell final expense life insurance, if I have an agent that's struggling and they're complaining they're not selling enough, the first thing I ask them is, well, how many people have you seen a week? Perfect example, I had a guy named Wes. He lives in North Carolina. Great agent. I hope he's doing great. I uh, really like the guy. Uh, his closing ratio is like great. He has 60% closing ratio. He was selling three apps a week, but he was unsatisfied with what he was selling. I said, okay, um, you're selling 60%. What's not the like? Well, I'm just not selling enough. Okay, how many people are you seeing? Five people a week. So the guy's writing three deals off of five appointments. And that was an average over several weeks or a month. That's great. The solution is you got to scale up. you got to start doing the numbers. So you do 15 appointments, holy crap. Even if you only write seven or eight deals, if not nine, the same percentage, that's great in this business. You're going to be a six-figure producer in no time. So uh, the point is, is that there's a point when caring about what your presentation is doesn't matter as much as maximizing consistency. Again, everybody wants to sell you a sales program. Everyone wants to tell you some newfangled approach to selling. All you have to do is take a basic approach that does the job that you believe in and can and can consistently work because it aligns with your personality and do the work. All right. It's all it's a work. It's mostly work. It's, it's work seeing people, but that's it's not sexy to talk about that. It's better to talk about the hundredth close uh, uh, lingo you could use and, and and that's stupid you know you don't need to worry about closing you need to worry about getting appointments and seeing them because people will close themselves if you see enough people it's funny how business falls out of the sky when you're doing enough appointments and that's kind of the main takeaway with this this video here so how do you get um, oh a couple other things here um, yeah the other thing too with and this is important too there's the law of marginal return so I think there's a point that salespeople need to realize, which is good enough is good enough, all right? You know, you may not be able to get a, let's say, forever presentation, you're selling half of them. You may not be able to get that up to 75%. And obsessing to get from 50% to 75% closing ratio may be an impossibility. However, maybe instead you could sell and run a few more appointments on top of what you're doing to get the same outcome, the same outcome and in income. So you see, it's, it's sometimes focusing on the wrong numbers is going to waste your time. And whereas what you really need to focus on are the right numbers, which is how do you scale your activity to get higher to the kind of income that you're trying to learn? Again, it goes back to numbers, less about technique, while important, but usually about numbers. So how do you get the law of large numbers to work in your favor? So at this point, you know, we talk about numbers as being a sales being a numbers game. Maybe at this point you're thinking, okay, I can see why this is the case. Yeah, I got a sales presentation alike. Yeah, I need to double my production. Well, how do I actually get there? How do I get from point A to point B? So first of all, it's all about seeing the people, all right? It's what we say in the life insurance business. There's three ways to be successful selling life insurance. See the people, see the people, see the people. Some will, some won't. So what? And that's a numbers reference. You got to see enough people and whatever it is that you're selling to make it happen. So you got to be a fanatical prospector. So how do you do that? Well, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you can cold call. You can do door-to-door -door cold calling. You can do telephone calling. You can hire somebody to call. You can generate leads through the mail. You can do direct mail. You can do lead-based generation. You can do seminars. I don't really care. 
That's not really the point. The point is, is whatever your method is, you have to scale it up to that point that hits your production on a presentation-based goal on a weekly basis. And, 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 and that goes into understanding your ratios. Again, you got to understand what kind of salesperson you are. And um, once you know your numbers and once you think you're good enough at this business to, to help people out that, that are the ones that need your help, then you figure out, okay, how do I take it from where I am today to the next level, like double the production, let's say, as being a first primary goal? Uh, you know, how many more calls am I going to have to make? How many more activity am I going to have to do to make it happen? And then three, and this is important, it's, it's easy to get mired down in saying, I'm going to make $100,000 a year in income. Uh, but how am I going to do that, right? So instead of thinking in annual goals, you need to chunk down your goals and think down to the day. There's a good book over here. Uh, let's see, it's, it's, it's called It Can Only Get Better by Tony Gordon. So this is a life insurance sales book specific. The idea behind the book is the guy talks about his, his rags to riches story in the insurance business. Really, it's more about his failure to success story. And, and he was taught the magic 15 number, about 15 appointments a week. And, and the point I'm, I'm bringing up with this is that he talked about how he stopped worrying about what he did weekly instead of what he worried, and he started worried about what he did daily. Because the concept of a weekly or monthly goal allows for, for room to be made to where you can slack off one day because you're not, you're not necessarily held to account. You can make up for a slack day the next day, right? But days turn into weeks, which turn into months, which turn into poor production results. So what he decided to do, what Tony did, is that he says, look, my goal is 15 appointments a week. I want four appointments a day. I'm going to stop at nothing to book 14 appointments a day. That's all I want. That's all I'm interested in. How do I get four appointments a day? And from there, he learned how to hit that, and he made sure no matter what, if he was at two appointments on Monday at 5 o'clock on Friday night, he was not leaving home. Until he had the extra two to hit his four number. Okay, so that's the kind of dedication you got to have. You will develop a lot more urgency to hit daily goals, and that if you actually keep yourself accountable to them, then saying, "Ah, oh, it's a weekly goal. If I don't hit it today, I could hit it tomorrow. I'll make up for this." That's that's avoidance behavior. That's how you get away from your goals, and ultimately it detracts you from the outset. So, in conclusion, sales is definitely a numbers game. And you definitely do need to know what you're doing. There's definitely always room in sales uh, for sales training. You need to ask good questions. You need to be presentable. You need to follow the basics. But what I hear from all sorts of salespeople across the country time and again is that if they can get in front of a prospect, they do pretty good. But they they're always challenged by how can they get in front of enough prospects. And at the end of the day, if you're not getting enough, enough prospects, there is something broken when it comes to your prospecting or lead generation business. And that's where you need to focus your time. If you're closing half of presentations in the life insurance business, you don't need to worry about how to close two thirds. You need to worry about how to do more than the measly three, four, or five appointments you're getting and, and multiply that by two, three, four, five times the amount if you want to go real crazy like me. So it's all a numbers game, ultimately, once you get good enough. And most of you guys, I'm telling you, yeah, you can do a little things better, but you probably are better than you think. And you need to really invest yourself in the concept of scaling up your activity on a consistent basis and figuring out how to do that. My name is Dave Duford. I am the owner and operator of Final Expense Agent Mentor. I specifically work in the final expense life insurance business, helping recruiting agents into it to help them uh, run their own life insurance business. If you'd like to learn more about what I do, you can go to feagentmentor.com and uh, check out what I have to offer there. I also write books. I write books, lots of them. This is one in particular. It's called The Official Guide to Selling Final Expense Insurance. Find it on Amazon, or you can buy an ebook version off of my website. My name is Dave Duford. Thank you so much for watching. Please comment or like the video and subscribe too if you haven't already. We'll see you next time. Take care.